We end this program as we began it by commemorating an anniversary. Let's listen to President George W. Bush speaking on October 7th, 2001. Good afternoon. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. These carefully targeted actions are designed to disrupt the use of Afghanistan as a terrorist base of operations and to attack the military capability of the Taliban regime. We are joined in this operation by our staunch friend, Great Britain. All right, so Other let's close... stop right there. Uh, there are so many ways we can go with this, but first of all, I want to point out that uh, this was 2001. We had uh, a young woman on the program today who is uh, engaging in political activism on behalf of her entire generation. Angela Chen from American University was either not born or was a newborn infant when this war began. As Major D Danny Sherson pointed out earlier in this program, we have soldiers going to fight in Afghanistan who weren't even alive when the war began. This is the longest war in American history. It has no immediate prospects of ending. We can also talk about the fact that President George W. Bush, who seems to be uh, a favorite among many Democrats now because he handed Michelle Obama a piece of candy at a funeral, that George W. Bush said this was, uh, what were his words, carefully targeted, that this was a ter carefully targeted uh, military exercise. Of course, it's not that carefully targeted if it's still going on 17 years later. We've spent more than $120 billion, that's $120 billion, just on reconstruction efforts in Afghanistan alone, and the country is in chaos. And as for Great Britain, the Brits have at least had the wisdom to recognize that Tony Blair, who led them into this horrific exercise with the United States, uh, was a fraud and a phony who misled them into war. They conducted an investigation into that, the Downing Street investigation. They, uh, they found out that they had been lied to. Uh, Tony Blair is despised in his home country and rightfully so for his role in the war. Uh, we need to have a better memory. We need to understand uh, George Bush's approval ratings, which at one point were uh, something like 18 or 30 percent for the country as a whole, uh, recently exceeded 50 percent for Democrats. How does that happen? How do we become so forgetful in the course of our endless war in Afghanistan? Now, just as a quick update on where we are now, uh, in, in Afghanistan, I want to read you from a policy brief prepared by the Congressional Research Office and updated last month. It says that Afghanistan has been a central U.S. foreign policy concern since 2001, describes our invasion, uh, and then goes on to say, while military officials profess greater optimism about the course of the war in 2018. Other policymakers and analysts have described the war against the insurgency, which controls or contests nearly half the country's territory by Pentagon estimates as a stalemate. Furthermore, the Afghan government, and again, I'm reading from the Congressional Research Office, the Afghan government faces broad public criticism for its ongoing inability to combat corruption, deliver security, alleviate rising ethnic tensions and develop the economy. So the government we're backing is a failure. Half the country is either uh, uh, in danger or under the control of the enemy we are uh, professing to fight there. There is absolutely no progress being made. Now, uh, this is what uh, Defense Secretary James Mattis said. Uh, a while back as we were getting, uh, increasing our troop involvement there, not to the scale it was before, but up to, as I believe it is around 14,000 troops now, Mattis said, quote, we are there in order to ensure that America's security, and just think back to 9-11 in this building, is not threatened out of that location. That involves the Afghan people being in control of their own future. Uh, that is why we talked about an Afghan-led, Afghan-owned reconciliation process. And we believe the best way to get there is to ensure Taliban recognizes they can't win on the battlefield, they must negotiate. And then he added, Mattis, 
now, would we still have troops in Afghanistan five years from now? I can't give you the answer to that. So the Defense Department has no exit strategy, strategy. It has no strategy for winning. It's not winning. This thing is dragging on and on. In the end, we will give up and walk away. That will be the only way. The question is, how much more uh, wasted time will there be? How much longer will we kowtow to a military industrial machine gone out of control? How much longer will we so deify the military that we can't see when it is helpless and floundering as it is in Afghanistan. We simply have to put an end to this. Afghanistan is not only a tragedy in its own right, it is symptomatic of something much bigger and much more wrong with our political culture as a whole. As I said to Major Sherson, paraphrasing George Orwell, we have always been at war with Afghanistan. We were on the other side of the Afghanistan war when the Russians were in there. When, when it's not Afghanistan, it will be something else because the military industrial complex wants to be fed with money and lives. And that will go on until we are brave enough and wise enough to demand that it stop.